Something that interests me a lot is movie marketing and maybe not so much like trailers and whatnot, but like the more physical media that manifests around the time that a movie is supposed to come out. I really used to like looking at newspapers to see like movie stills coming out, um, if people <laughs> happen to report on them in the newspaper. And cause that was just like a really rare early glimpse into a movie that you were gonna be super excited to see. Or if the movie had a website, but which one doesn't these days, you could also go on the website and look up more information about the movie as the movie studio slowly decided to leak information to you. But way back in the day, before there was any kind of cyber anything, Movie studios used to release the movie poster, perhaps a few stills for newspapers, and something called movie lobby cards. And movie lobby cards functioned a lot like a poster, but they were smaller, sometimes being as small as like a sheet of paper, like a regular 11 by eight and a half, or sometimes they'd be a little bigger and they'd be like a 12 by 15 sheet of paper. What was depicted on these movie lobby cards were images from the film that you were going to be seeing and they could come in sets as low as 6 or as high as 12 depending on what the movie company wanted to push. But lobby cards were not always guaranteed from a movie studio. It depended on if the company was gonna go belly up and they couldn't afford to do much more marketing beyond a trailer. But sometimes with like movies that were like really wanting to be pushed by these movie studios, they would have the 12. And sometimes um, what set of 12 you received was different based on the region. Lobby cards are not a huge thing in the United States anymore, and um, they're kind of a rarity throughout the world too, even. But if you go look up your favorite movie and put lobby card behind the search, more, more chances than not you will find them. And these things can be worth some money, depending on what movie that they're from, um, the rarity of said card, as well as the condition. I'm gonna be showing you what I have in a little bit, but I don't own any that are of any kind of substantial worth. What's really cool though about these lobby cards is that they really showcase the design at the certain time that they were created. So I have lobby cards from four different movies. Um, the first is Ordinary People. This one came in a set of eight. I have five on display because I love Timothy Hutton. Always behind me so far are my Frankenstein lobby cards. These ones are not authentic. They are reproductions from a website that I got them uh, that I found on eBay. Um, and they're pretty cool. I tried to get as many as I could that had Dwight Fry in them or were as visually appealing as possible. Um, next is East of Eden. These came from France. I had them shipped across the ocean. And these are the smallest lobby cards that I have. They're about a little bit smaller than a, a piece of paper. I'm, I'm looking at them as I'm talking about them. But uh, there were a few that did not feature James Dean. That one came in a set of 12, and I have eight on display right now. And lastly is from another movie called Another Country. I have a video based on the play version. Um, that one also came in a set of eight, and I have six on display right now. Those were the most visually interesting ones. I got those from Spain. And since that it, since it is a more obscure movie, I was worried that it wasn't going to have any and how much they would be if they were to exist. But thankfully I got them for like a decent price. And what's really cool about all of these is that they can, they can price anywhere from like $3 if they're like really popular, like there's a lot of them out there, or they can be anywhere from like, I think the most I've seen for one lobby card is $40. That was for a Bonnie and Clyde lobby card. And they can be worth more if they're like signed or if you buy them in like a full set. Thankfully, I think the most I paid for anything was probably the Ordinary People one. I got those off of Etsy for about $60 for the set. But also those ones are a little more rare too. I think movie lobby cards are an interesting piece of movie history because it really shows um, another side of marketing that is like slowly dying as it's replaced with more online marketing. And it really goes to see like what the whole like marketing package of a film could entail 
as well as potentially early or alternate shots that would be featured in a movie or not at all. In the Ordinary People set that I have, there's one image of Conrad writing by a window that's not featured in the movie at all. So like they take a glimpse into like the early marketing tactics that are utilized before a movie is finalized or before a final cut is submitted to their studio. So it's kind of cool in that way to examine the film through that lens. Hello, Dustin from Editor Land here. Um, I also forgot to mention that they are like a visually or aesthetically pleasing bit of art for any budding movie collector. So I would definitely include that here. Go get them. All right. Well, I think we're going to leave it here for now. This is one of my shorter videos, but eh. if you like this content, go ahead and hit that like button as well as ring that notification bell. If you want to see more, it'd be really cool to have you back. Like really cool. All right. This is Dustin signing off, but only for now.